Shalom. The Mesha steel is a Moabite stone with an inscription by King Mesha of Moab. The steel of King Mesha constitutes one of the most important direct accounts of the history of the world that is related to the Bible. The inscription pays tribute to the sovereign celebrating his great building works and victories over the kingdom of Israel during the reign of Ahab, son of Omri. The inscription itself is not dated, but it gives the extremely significant information that Omri, the king of Israel during his reign, and that his sons occupied part of the land of Moab until Israel perished and Mesha was able once again to rule over the full extent of his land and to fortify his cities. Now Moabite king named Mesha is also mentioned in 2 Kings 3, 4 to 27, where the allied kings of Israel, Judah, and Edom mount an expedition against him. The Mesha inscription says nothing about this, but it does shed decisive light on the relationships and tensions which existed between Israel and Moab at the time of dynasty of Omri, and at least it fits admirably into the wider context of the time. The arc shape of the steel and the basalt used are characteristics of the votive steels erected in the Levant since the Bronze Age, from the Ugarit in the Syrian coast to Hazor in Galilee. The great steel was discovered as early as AD 1868 by a missionary named Klein in Dibon, ancient Dibon. The great steel which bears the Mesha inscription that King Mesha in 9th century BC claimed victory over the Israelites. The restored fragments which are in the lure has 34 lines on it. Mesha describes himself as a Debonite. So will, he will have ruled from Dibon, the capital kingdom of Moab. In the fashion of the Syrian inscription, after an introduction, Mesha speaks in the first person. This is what the steel said. I am Mesha, king of Moab, the Debonite. He describes his relations with Israel in this way. As for Omri, king of Israel, he humbled Moab many years. For Chemosh, the Moabite god, was angry at his land, and has his son followed him, and he also said, I will humble Moab. In my time he spoke, but I had triumphed over him and over his house, while Israel has perished forever. Omri had occupied the land of Mediba, and had dwelt there in his time, and half the time of his forty years. But Chemosh dwelt there in my time. This information supplements what the Old Testament talks about Israel perishing. He seems to mean the end of the dynasty of Omri. At any rate, after the death of Ahab, the Old Testament records a Moabite revolt in 2 Kings 3, 5, along with Heb tribute which had to be paid. The invasion of Moab by Ahab's son Joram, his alliance with Jehoshaphat of Judah, including Edom, which was a dependency of Judah, presupposed a Moabite uprising after the death of Ahab. However, it is within the realms of possibility that at that time, Mesha was already fighting against Israel, but was only in a position to win back the territory occupied by Israel after the fall of the house of Omri. He boasts of this in his inscription, which also lays particular stress on his building activity in numerous places, while details of the synchronizations with Second Kings 3 are satisfactory. On the whole text complement each other. Moab suffered under the Israelite expansion during the reign of the house of Omri. There were battles in which Judah took part, but nevertheless, Mesha succeeded in winning back the area north of the Arnon, and perhaps even vanishing the threat posed by the Edomites in the south. This can only have happened during the last years of, of the house of Omri. That the fall of Israel mentioned by Mesha refers to the end of the dynasty is of course no more than an interpretation. 
Also in Mesha Steel noted that lines 5, 10, and 18 contained reference to the king of Israel, but no one had noticed up until now that the broken line 31 also contained a reference to the house of David. But even this inscription is significant, it cannot pretend to help assess the meaning and significance of David, a man who played a vital role in the Israel's national existence. Even this proof connected what is in the Bible, the Bible is reliable and true, and one can accept it with faith that the events happened were true. <laughs> Okay, ulitin natin.